Hi folks, this is Checkpoint Quiz 8.1. We're given a system of linear equations. We're asked to put the system in triangular form and solve. And then we're asked to classify the system and to check our answer algebraically. So remember, what is triangular form? What's the goal here? I want to do some uh, legal operations with these equations to transform it into a system where the first equation starts off with a 1x. The second equation then starts off with a 1y. And the last equation has uh, is solved for z. And then once I get the z, I substitute it back in here to get the y. And then with y and z, I substitute them back in here to get the x. So this is what the goal is. Now this may not happen depending on the nature of the system, uh, but this is what we're trying to, to, to get to. So when I look at my system, the first order of business is to try to get this x, uh, 1x in the upper left hand corner. So as I look at this, uh, there's you know a couple different ways we could get that 1x. There's going to be no avoiding fractions at some point in the future, so I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and divide the first equation uh, by uh, 2. And what I mean by that is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 1 half and therefore distribute the 1, uh, one half through. So that's our first step. So I start off with the system as given to me. 2x minus 3y plus z is 2. 3x minus y plus 2z is negative 1 and 7x plus 5z is negative 5 and so the first step is I'm just going to replace equation 1 with 1 half equation 1 so what I mean by that is I multiply both sides of the equation by half and then distribute the half through so I'm going to get x minus 3 halves y plus 1 half z equals 1. And then 3x minus y plus 2z is negative 1. And then 7x plus 5z is negative 5. So I've got my 1x in the upper left hand corner. And what I need to do is use this equation to eliminate the x's underneath it. So how do I go about uh, doing that? Well, I'm going to multiply the first, I'm going to replace the second equation with itself plus a multiple of the first equation. If I multiply the first equation by negative 3 and then add it to the second equation, that will kill off the x's down there. And I'll do the same thing. I'll replace the third equation with the multiple of the first equation to kill off the x's down there. So I'm going to replace equation 2 with negative 3 equation 1 plus equation 2. So that's the to eliminate the x there. And then I'm going to replace equation 3 with negative 7 equation 1 plus equation 3. So let's see what system I get from that. So equation 1 is going to stay as is. So I multiply each term by negative 3 and then add it to what's below to get the new equation 2. So negative 3x plus 3x kills the x off, which is what I wanted to do. I'm going to have, when I multiply this by negative 3, I get a positive 9 halves y minus 1y is going to give me a positive 7 halves y. When I multiply this by negative 3, I get a negative 3 halves z. When I add that to 2z, I get a 1 half z. When I multiply this by negative 3, I get negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. So that's the new equation 2 with no x in it. Now I'm going to multiply this equation in each term in it by negative 7 and then add it to this equation to wipe out what's under there. So take 
x times negative 7 and add that to 7x. It's going to kill off the x's. I multiply this by negative 7. I get a positive 21 halves y. And there's no y's down there, so I get a 21 halves y. I multiply this by negative 7. I get negative 7 halves. Add that to 5, which is 10 halves, and it's going to give me a 3 halves z. I multiply this by negative 7 and get negative 7, and add that there, I get negative 12. So what I've accomplished is I've got an x in the first equation with coefficient 1, and I have no x's underneath it. Okay, so that's good. Now I'm going to go after this and get a coefficient of 1 with the y. And so how can I do that? Well, I can multiply this equation by 2 sevenths. So I'm going to replace e2 with 2 sevenths e2. So I'm dividing by 7 halves, which is the same as multiplying by 2 sevenths. So equation 1 I haven't messed with. I'm multiplying both sides of this equation by 2 sevenths. So distributing that through, I'm going to get a y plus uh, 1 seventh z equals negative 8 sevenths. And then below here I've got equation 3 as usual. You get that. Oops. I'm sorry, it's 21 halves. Okay, so that's my new equation 3. So now that I have a 1y here, I need to kill off the y's underneath it. So I've got to replace equation 3 with negative 21 halves equation 2 plus equation 3. All right, so let's go ahead and do this move here. The first equation I'm leaving alone. Second equation I'm leaving alone. And I need to multiply this equation, both sides, by negative 21 halves and then add it to this equation. So when I multiply this by negative 21 halves and add it, that kills off the y's, which is what I want. When I multiply this by negative 21 halves, the result is negative 3 halves z. So negative 3 halves z plus 3 halves z actually ends up killing off the z's as well. So that's a 0 on that side. And when I multiply this side by negative 21 halves, um, when in doubt, write it out. You can see what happens is that gives me a negative 3, gives me a negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12, so when I add it there, I get a positive 12. Okay, so at this point, it's not possible uh, to actually solve for z itself, but I get a true equation. This is an equation that's true all the time. This is called an identity. And what this tells us is that there's no restriction on the z. All right, so what we have in this case is we have a consistent dependent system because we have a free variable. Okay, so this tells us that uh, z is a free variable, which means z can be anything it wants. So z, we're going to just let z be t for some real number t. And then we're just going to go back and uh, do back substitution then to figure out what the x and y are in terms of this uh, parameter t.